behind their neighborhood association and move it forward. Thank you, Your Honor. Thanks, Larry. Ed? I need to revisit what we talked about last week in the sale of the Vitagraph property. I remain perplexed and concerned by that transaction and the implications. Uh, the almost 100 people that I spoke to last night at the FBIR and Zachary Taylor Neighborhood Associations uh, also were very uh, concerned, uh, and I think that needs to be continue to be vetted. Um, in 2001, that property was bought by Richard Dunning and the Hudson Reno LLC for some $1.4 million. Eight months ago, they came to the Mary Gardens Foundation, a nonprofit, and uh, or the Mary Gardens Foundation asked to buy uh, that property from Hudson Reno LLC for the purposes of providing for relocation of displaced Mary Gardens office and maintenance facilities. They received the funding from the Economic Development Trust in the form of a loan for $4.2 million after getting an appraisal from Michael uh, Stacy, uh, who appraised that property of $4.2 million. The, uh, at, at the time that that transaction took place, negotiations, the contract was being negotiated for the city to turn over uh, Mary Gardens, uh, to the Mary Gardens Foundation. Uh, fast forward to um, the last couple of weeks, the contract was, the 42-page contract was finalized, and the very next day after the contract was, was written, uh, Jim Couch was approached by Jim Tolbert, who indicated that we need, had to hear it the, the very next week, in less than a week time, we had to put that contract on the uh, council uh, with the mayor, David Greenwell, who's an accountant, and Meg Salyer, whose word it is, were not uh, here. Um, my understanding is the interest, the $111,003, was never paid from the Mary Gardens Foundation to the Economic Development Trust. Um, and the, the sense I get from Jim Tolbert, from Leslie Batcher, that, that from Wiley that negotiated the contract was, this is, you know, because the issue is, is that Rick Dunning and the Hudson Reno LLC then claimed that the property was worth $6.9 million, claimed a $2.7 million tax deduction, when those of us who go on the uh, uh, county assessor's site and look at the price, it's not the $4.2 million that, the, that, we pay, that was actually paid, it's $6.9 million. So the, the comps are being artificially elevated. There's no asterisk that, that says it was actually $4.2 million. It says that land was sold for $6.9 million. So, the, the body language and, and what everyone's saying, this is an arm's length transaction, this is not the uh, business of us. Uh, Wiley said, I don't see how it's relevant. That's between him and his accountants and lawyers. Uh, Jim Tolbert said the same thing. It's, it's, there's a sense that there is a, an IRS problem here that, that potentially could rise to the level of tax fraud. Again, I'm just getting all this stuff and getting these appraisals and all this stuff today uh, and three weeks into it. but. Uh, and I've hired my own accountant. I just pay him an hourly rate that's going over this, and he indicates to me that there's a, there's a potential problem with the uh, IRS on this transaction. So the, the problem I have is, is the idea of city staff and, and the nonprofit saying, well, it, that's, that's him. That has nothing to do with us. That's between him and the IRS. If we, if, if we knew that someone was that so bought a, a widget from us legally that allowed them to then take water from the city, for example, and we said, well, that sale of the widget was, was perfectly legal, and, and the fact that he's taking water from the city, uh, that's between him and the city. That, that wouldn't be acceptable then, and it's not acceptable now. Um, the fact is that transaction wouldn't be possible without Rick Dunning doing a part gift, part sale to a nonprofit. It requires a nonprofit to, to pull off this, this deal. And it requires the city and the taxpayer to provide a loan to the nonprofit for them to, to, to pull off this deal. So we are involved. And it's not okay to say, this doesn't involve us. This is just between Rick Dunning and the IRS. The other problem, as I alluded to, is that we're artificially increasing comp prices. The other problem is that when Steve Lackmeyer reports that uh, on the Mary Gardens Foundation deal that we it, it's now we're going to pay $1.1 million to the Myriad Gardens Foundation to run the Myriad Gardens. Well, that's not entirely accurate. Actually, we pay $1.1 million a year, and the taxpayers just bought a property for $4.2 million to take that off the Myriad Gardens Foundation books. 
Because what, what I'm hearing from Wiley and others is that people who want to donate to the Myriad Gardens Foundation don't want this thing on their books. So the taxpayers just spent $4 million to get it off the Myriad Gardens Foundation's books to open it up so that then people could then donate to the Myriad Gardens Foundation. So it's not that we spent $1.1 million, it's that we spent $1.1 million and the taxpayers bought a property for $4.2 million. Do we need that property? We, the, the people that, that are going to be working on Myriad Gardens are city employees who largely already have offices. What, why does the city need a property on Hudson and Reno for $4.2 million? Why does the taxpayer need that property? And if the taxpayer does need that property, don't we have a mechanism in place for them to get it, that being eminent domain? If there's a need and a justification for the taxpayer to acquire that property, couldn't we just go to Rick Dunning and say, we need that property. Here's an appraisal. This is what it's worth. If you think it's worth $6.9 million, take it to a judge and we'll settle it. But that's what eminent domain is for. You don't loan it to a uh, nonprofit and then eight months later take it back. You're out the $111,000 in interest. You're out the however many tens of thousands of dollars in closing costs on the loan. That, that's not the way to do it. Uh, and so. Uh, I, I go back to this, this issue. I need time, and the people need time to go over these contracts. And it, it got hijacked a little bit with these three public hearings, and, and I agree with Meg. It, why, it, it shouldn't be restricted to a certain ward. I need to, to review these contracts. And there, what would be wrong with throwing it out there and letting the people look at it as well and say, hey, did you notice this on page 29? So all I'm asking for, without it getting so convoluted like we turned it into this thing, is instead of we, we finish the 42-page contract on Tuesday and we take it to Jim Couch to be put on the consent on Wednesday, uh, I need time and the people need time to look at these contracts. We need a month. I'm three weeks into it. I'm just now getting the appraisals and all the documents today after three weeks of working fairly diligently on this. Uh, and there's just not enough time. That's all I'm asking for. It shouldn't be restricted to a ward. It's just these contracts that are negotiated by the municipal counselor's office, I want them. As soon as they're completed, I want them to go over, and I think I should have a month. And, you, and that's, we could just leave it at that and make it very simple. I don't, I don't think there's any way the people wouldn't support that, and, and I'm not sure why, why we couldn't. Uh, I'll leave it at that. Thanks. Gary? Uh, 